All right, some of you have heard me talk about this on YouTube. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> I get this all throughout this convention. Wherever, aren't you the guy on YouTube? Like, yes, I'm the guy on YouTube. Yes. So, <laughs> even if they're referring to some cartoon or whatever. Anyway, so here's what I want to share with you. I'm going to give you those of you that are taking notes. Write this in English. Declare the greatness only of your master. Declare the greatness only of your master. It's a beautiful declaration, isn't it? To proclaim, declare the greatness only of your master. The Quran says this in the words, وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ Now, the word, the first syllable, even those of you that are even a little bit familiar with Arabic, wa. That's the first sound you heard. When I recited the Arabic, you heard wa. Now what does wa mean? Anyone know? Arabic. Yeah, it, except it means and in modern Arabic. And in classical Arabic, that wa sound had 21 different benefits. One of them being and. But another one being what's called istiqnaf. The English equivalent being the start of a new sentence. You know how in English you start a new sentence with a capital letter? Well, the ancient Arab can do that with a wa. If they say wa, it doesn't necessarily mean and. And this is why those of you that read the Quran in translation and see a sentence beginning with and, you say, I learned in third grade, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> but I guess he's Allah, he could do it. <laughs> it's not exactly and, it's something else. It's something more, okay? Now keeping that sentence starter aside, what's left? Declare the greatness only of your master. Now, Rabbaka fakabbir, those of you who know Arabic, Ra is the first letter. Fakabbir, Ra is the last letter. Rabba, what's the second syllable you heard? Ba, fakabbir, what's the second last syllable you heard? Ba, Rabbaka, what's the third you heard? Kaf, Rabbaka fakabbir, what's the third last you heard? In other words, the Quran declares the great, tells us to declare the greatness only of your Lord and it's spelled in a way that is the same backwards and forwards. It is spelled backwards and forwards identically. In English we call this what? Anybody know? Yeah, it's called a palindrome. Now in English we also have palindromes. We have race car. <laughs> we do. Race car is pretty cool. All right, the, the, the longest one I know in English, other than Bob, is... Um, some of the um, some of those who went to extreme in Balagha, they went to extremes in the sciences of Arabic language, and they're known throughout every time. You have people who go into language. Palindromes are cute. The word race car, you can spell it forwards and backwards the same way. It's cute. Is it Aiden? Even in English, those of you who are English teachers or professionals, is a palindrome something that becomes a serious lang linguistic issue ever? It's a party favor. It's a silly thing that nobody really would go into any depths except that he would be viewed as a silly person. It's not considered a science that would lead to anything, a palindrome. And of course, silly people are busy with it, uh, writing entire stories that if you read the story backwards, it has a, you know, the same story as backwards. Um, uh, it's mentioned that some of the uh, people who are busy with these kind of things in Arabic would write letters where if you read the letter backwards, it would be the response to the letter. Just as tafannun, tarfi, to play about with language, like what people do with children at parties or something like that. But some people, of course, always there's someone going overboard with something silly. So in the time of uh, Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti, this had appeared. Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti, uh, he died in the year 911. So we're talking about something after nine centuries of Islam. It appeared then. We're not talking about something that appeared in the time of the Salaf. So he mentioned it, that we have that in the Qur'an as well. And he mentioned two verses. وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ Take off the wow. It's not a true palindrome because you have to take off a letter. A palindrome, you don't need to take off any letters. But it's a partial palindrome. It's a, uh, after you adjust it with your human uh, you know, adjustment, it becomes a palindrome. وَرَبَّكَ um, فَكَبِّرْ So it's رَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ رَا بَا كَاف رَبَّكَ فا in the middle كَاف بَا رَا رَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ طيب Is it a miracle? مُعْجِزَة What's a مُعْجِزَة? Define a مُعْجِزَة for me. We talked about this earlier, right? The مُعْجِزَة is what? مَا يُجْرِيهِ اللَّهُ عَلَى يَدِي نَبِيَّ مِنْ أَنْبِيَائِهِ 
Ta'jiza, and it's, it's ta'jizi. The mu'jiza is ta'jizi. What's it mean? You can't do it. Split the moon in half. Fadl. Go ahead. You can't do it. That's what makes it a miracle. It's not a miracle when everybody can do it. It's a miracle when no one can do it except someone who's been given a prophethood and special signs from Allah for, for His truthfulness. The Qur'an is a miracle. All of it in itself is a miracle. Not that this ayat read backwards is a miracle now. All right. Kullun fi falak. Yes, Kullun fi falak. That's the second one. Doesn't really matter. Why do I say it doesn't matter? Because first of all, we don't know anything from our salaf that would indicate any um, recommendation or any interest in trying to find a benefit from reading the Qur'an backwards. They were ahras al-nas. They were the most vigilant, devout people to get benefit of the Qur'an from any way you can get benefit. Were they reading the ayats backward, backwards to get benefit? Never. Something unheard of. Only in the modern times when the people's minds have become corrupt and they've become busy with what does not benefit them. Secondly, reading the ayats of the Qur'an backwards resembles what? Have you ever heard? Huh? Sihr. Magicians, people who would write a talisman for you to hang around your neck to help you get healed. And they tell you it's just Qur'an, don't worry about it. Ask the people who know, open them up. It's always Qur'an written backwards. It's always names of demons and devils. It's always a numerology, configurations of numbers and things that are in strange patterns. Uh, sometimes directly, yeah, Iblis and things like that. And they tell you it's Qur'an hanging around your neck. Never do that. Never allow someone in your presence to have a, a, an amulet around their neck where they say, I have Qur'an in here, or I have some dua in here that a sheikh made for me. Ask them, please, can we open it up? It's no problem if we open it up and look at it. Then you see what's inside of it, and you can show the person for themselves. Anyway. Um, so it resembles musha'widin and sahara, the people who are charlatans, the people who, who, who are into black magic and things like that reading the Qur'an backwards. You find that the magicians are requested by Iblis or by his junud, by his, um, by his troops, uh, by his awliya. They are requested to write an ayat backwards, rip it up, urinate on it, and these kinds of things. They're requested to do these things. So giving some precedence to the ayats written backwards is not from the way of the Muslims in any way, shape, or fashion. Let alone, we're talking about tafsir. So first of all, it's not known from the salaf. Secondly, it's known to be from the way of deviant, uh, satanic people, magicians, occultists, and so on. Furthermore, it's not tafsir in any way whatsoever. Tafsir, the meaning of tafsir is al-kashfu wal-ilahu li muradillahi ta'ala min kalamihi al-munazzal ala Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The definition of tafsir is to give an explanation to, to explain the meaning of the words that Allah revealed to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Qur'an. That's tafsir. How is this tafsir? That you can read the ayat backwards, it has the same exact letters, the same exact meanings. What would the tafsir be anyway? If there, if there was something permissible to look at, what is the meaning? It's the same as when you read it the other way. It doesn't have any meaning. So what are you getting out of it? Except silliness. Fourthly, how could you call it a mu'jiza? Aside from it not being the way of the salaf. Aside from it being the way of the musha'awadim. The way of the occultists. Aside from it not being tafsir, not from far, how could you call it a mu'jiza? A miracle? Simply, is the word race car a miracle? Race car, is it a miracle? When you hear the word race car, and someone told you race car can be spelled forwards and backwards the same way, do you say, oh, it's a miracle? You're laughing, people would laugh at this. A miracle? And that's a pure palindrome. You don't have to take any letters off. Fifthly, it's not even a palindrome until you remove letters and interfere with it yourself. So then comparatively, sixthly, it's weaker than the palindromes the Kufar have in terms of it being a palindrome. It's not pure. You have to change it to make it a palindrome. Seventhly, or sixthly, seventhly, so whatever. Seventhly, other people can make bigger palindromes. So how is it a miracle? Kufar, go look up palindromes on Google. You'll find websites dedicated to palindromes. You'll find pages. You'll find someone wrote 10,000 word palindrome. So how is kullun fi falak a palindrome? Kullun fi falak. I mean, how is it a miracle? Sorry. How is it a miracle? What about it is miraculous? People who would spread this kind of tafsir, 
obviously did not study from Ahlul Ilm. They did not take this kind of tafsir from the scholars. Who are they? They are people who take uh, whatever they can find from any books and they tend to mix the worst of all of the books in tafsir, the latecomers especially, to mix all of the mistakes and the worst things and put them all together and not be able to distinguish. The same person reads from a Zamakhshari. Zamakhshari is, you know, Mu'tazili. And the scholars warn against his tafsir, even though it's strong in language, they warn against his tafsir, and they say that students of knowledge should not be busy with a zamakhshari. Some scholars might go into it here and there, but you find in the West someone speaking English, giving lessons in tafsir, and he's reading from a zamakhshari, and a sabuni, and all kinds of asha'ira, and all of those things, and he ends up with this kind of tafsir, and it's not shocking. And it's said about him that he's a specialist in tafsir. And this is the tafsir that he comes to, race car, the, the race car miracle. You know, and وَرَبَّكَ uh, فَكَبِّرْ It's a miracle, backwards as it is forwards. Bah, not tafsir, this is dalala, this is going astray. Because if we were to encourage this kind of thing, and if, I, if we were to think it's praiseworthy, think about how many people would be going home right now with a mushaf, and I'm going to find a palindrome. They're reading the ayat of Allah backwards. Look at the result. If we said, no, no, it's tolerable. Everything you said is gulu. Everything you said is just going overboard. It's actually because the Suyuti mentioned it, it's from the sciences of tafsir, it's in his book Al-Itqan, Fi Ulum Al-Qur'an. So because it's in there, it must be a correct, valid science of tafsir. Or at least tolerable. You can't say something really negative against it. What does it lead to? What's the reality of what happens when people say, okay, that's interesting, it's acceptable to mention, you know? It's going to happen. You're going to find all kinds of people looking for their palindromes in the Qur'an. And what's the benefit? What would you ever gain out of that? Imagine if you spent one hour of your life looking for a palindrome. What would you gain in your life? Wasted. Nothing. You waste your life. If anything, you would be misled. You would be misled. What if you found meanings? You would, your heart could be affected. What if you found a meaning that was falsehood? What if you found words that came out that, that were words of, of, of very bad language or something? You would think this is from Quran. This is, from, this is in the book of Allah. This is from the book of Allah. The book of Allah is Arabi Mubin. It's clear Arabic. It's read from right to left if you didn't know. It's not read backwards. That's not Arabic. Anyway, hada wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.